Let's talk about Tweak. Tweak makes a complicated process very simple. Tweak is going to help you set up your initial crossover settings, time alignment settings, as well as tell the amplifier what kind of speakers you have connected to it. To help walk you through the process, we're going to set up a theoretical system today. So let's start with a subwoofer in the rear of the car. And in the front, we'll install a set of components with one inch tweeters and six and a half inch mid-range. But first things first, before we get started, make sure the amplifier has power, ground and remote, has all speakers connected that you intend to use in the system. The gains are set to their minimum positions and the amplifier is turned on. Now, go to kicker.com and download the Tweak software. You'll also need to have a mini USB cable handy. After installing the Tweak software, plug in the mini USB cable to the amplifier where it says GUI. Then connect to a laptop. Now double click the Tweak icon and you should now see the configure amplifier screen. Go ahead and press OK. Now, if everything has been connected properly, the yellow LED next to the GUI port will be lit. If that LED is not lit, please check your connections and re-execute the Tweak software. You should now see the amplifier setup screen as well as the name of the amplifier you have connected to in the top left hand portion of the Tweak menu. Click Next. This is where you'll give your amplifier a unique name. Then click Next. Now you'll see where it says Select Bridged Channels. This will tell Tweak what channels you intend to bridge in your IQ1000.5. For this demonstration, we will not be bridging the amp. Click Next. Now you'll see where it says Select Amplifier Inputs. On the left, you'll see where it says Amp to Source. This is where you'll tell Tweak whether or not you intend to use a fader in your system. If you are not running rear speakers or do not need fading ability, then select Fader Off. And at the amp, you'll just connect the front outputs of the head unit to the Amp 1 inputs. Now connecting the amplifier this way, you'll get signal to the Amp 1 inputs, the Amp 2 inputs, and when you have the sub source on the right selected as Amp 1, you'll also get signal to the sub input. If you intend to run rear speakers, then most likely you'll want fading ability between the front and the rear, and you'll select Fader On. Then, at the amp, make sure you have the front outputs of the head unit connected to Amp 1 inputs on the amplifier, and make sure you have the rear outputs of the head unit connected to the Amp 2 inputs on the amplifier. Now when you connect the amplifier this way, you'll have a choice as to where you want the subwoofer to get its input. It can come from the front outputs from the head unit or the rear outputs from the head unit. So if you would like the rear outputs of the head unit to be your subsource, then simply select Amp 2 here. Now if your head unit has a subwoofer out and you would like to use that to control the volume of your subwoofer, then just simply select subwoofer here. Then at the amp, make sure you connect the sub out of your head unit to the sub in on the amplifier. Click Next. Now you'll see Speaker Location for Available Channels. This is where you'll tell Tweak what kind of speakers you'll be connecting to the amplifier. For this demonstration, Amp 1 Left will be Left Front Tweeter. Amp 1 Right will be Right Front Tweeter. Amp 2 Left will be Left Front Midrange. Amp 2 Right will be Right Front Midrange and just leave subwoofer set as subwoofer. Click Next. Now you'll see speaker size for each channel. This is where we'll tell Tweak what size the speakers are that are connected to the amplifier. Since we're using one inch tweeters for this demonstration, amp one left will be set at one inch. Amp one right will also be set at one inch. And since we're using six and a half inch for this demonstration, Amp 2 left will be set at 6.5 inch, and Amp 2 right will also be set at 6.5 inch, and the subwoofer will be set up at 12 inch. Click Next. Now you'll see speaker distance from listening position. This measurement will tell Tweak where the listener is located in relation to the speakers. Now I'll be entering numbers in for this demonstration, but you'll want to use the numbers from your car instead. 
Since for this demonstration, we're using a set of tweeters on the amp one left and right channels, you'll simply measure from the left front tweeter to your left ear and put that measurement where it says amp one left. For amp one right, you will measure from the right front tweeter to your right ear and put that measurement here. For amp two left, you'll measure from the left mid-range to your left ear and put that measurement here. And for amp two right, you'll measure from the right front mid-range to your right ear and put that measurement here. Then measure from the center of the listener's head to the subwoofer and put that measurement here. For this demonstration, we're assuming there is a subwoofer connected to this amplifier. Therefore, we will not be making an entry where it says ref speaker. Click finish. Tweak will now configure your amplifier with the settings that you have given it. So let's just take a look and see what tweak is set up. If you look at the left front tweeter as an example, and you look down at the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that there's a crossover point set at 2000 Hertz. And you can adjust that now. Also, below this, you'll see there's a slope setup, and that is adjustable as well. If you click on the right front mid-range, you'll see it's got its own crossover as well as slope as well. If we look to the right, we'll see a graphic EQ. And just like the crossovers, there is discrete equalization on each channel in the amplifier. If we click the advanced tab, you can now see the input mixer. This is what tells the amplifier where you want the signals to route. And then down below, you can see the time alignment settings. And just like the others, these settings are derived from the information you provided in the amplifier setup screens. So now that you have a basic setup for your amplifier, you can go back and change the settings to exactly what you want.